Al Severson is, uh, uh, we, we sold a, a tractor for him last year. Uh, uh, we sold a big 430 for him last year at Pre-30. And <clears throat> I was, I spent quite a bit of time with that tractor. And I was so thoroughly impressed with uh, what he had done with that tractor and the way that it ran. Um, and, he, you know, he, uh, he started from just about nothing and uh, put that engine together and even even to the point of identifying some uh, maybe I don't I, what do you call it factory flaws or mistakes that the that the big four engineers made and actually improved the engine even a little better to make it uh, make it run even better but it was it, it was one of the best running tractor engines I've ever been around and and so uh, when I got onto a project uh, which is a which is a hackney auto plow with just in case you don't know what it looks like. That's what it looks like uh, I knew exactly who I wanted to send my engine to so uh, The just to give you some backstory the uh, the tractor was pretty much stuck from one end to the other end and uh, And it's it's a different engine. It's a model engine made in Indiana. So there's uh, there's most of the parts are made out of a material called unobtainium <laughs> and and uh, so there there is no uh, there is no finding parts for it. So uh, what we're going to have uh, what we're going to have Al talk about today is is how do you tackle an engine like that whenever it is stuck from head to toe. So you're on, big guy. Well, one of the first things you want to do on an engine such as this is decide what you want to save. You know you're going to destroy some stuff. Pick your battles. One of the things you're probably going to end up wrecking is going to be the pistons. They're easily made, or you can cross-reference them off of something else. If they're not stuck too bad, you can pull your valves out. You can put some pressure on the top of the piston, either with uh, hydraulics, or you can put a unit in there so you can pipe uh, air into it to create some pressure. But keep in mind, you create a, create a lot of pressure real fast, and you can destroy a lot of stuff real fast. If you've got a four inch piston, that's about a 12 inch square. And if you put 150 pounds of air pressure on it, that's about 1800 pounds of, that's about 1800 PSI of uh, pressure that you're putting against that piston. You throw hydraulics on it, uh, you can throw a hundred ton on that real fast and all of a sudden you've destroyed a cylinder block. So what we'll, on an engine such as this, we'll try to get all the pieces off of it from the outside that we can with heat, uh, some of it heating and cooling, a lot of different uh, methods for doing that. Some work, some don't. The pistons, you'll soak them down, let them soak for a month or two. Maybe put a, a jack underneath the crankshaft or something, put a little preload on them, and see if the penetrating oil that you put in there will leach down alongside the piston. A lot of different uh, recipes for penetrating oil. Some people use PV blaster, some people use croil. Some people take automatic transmission fluid with uh, acetone or something. Whatever you can put in there that'll wick down alongside the piston and uh, attack that rust. I see some companies are building an aerosol can now that uh, is a freeze. Loctite I believe is making one. And it comes out, of the nozzle, comes out of the nozzle at 45 degrees below zero and according to the can you spray it on, let it sit for two minutes and it's easily removed. Uh, <laughs> Good, good luck with that one. As I said, sometimes you've got to pick your battles and uh, decide what you want to save and what you, don't, what you don't want to save. On this particular one, we'd probably remove the cylinders individually, try to get some fluids in there, try to move them. If not, go in there and start machining the piston out and uh, make a core and cast some new ones. The odds are the cylinders are bad anyway, 
So you'll have to bore them oversize or bore them and sleeve them. Either way, you're going to want new pistons in there. The valves, get them out of there, replace them with something. Uh, there's a lot of companies that make valves. Tearing it apart, make sure you identify everything. Pull the timing cover off. Identify your crankshaft to your cam gear. Witness mark it. Make sure you can get everything back together the way it was. Rods, caps, keep all that stuff as pairs. Uh, mark one, two, three, four. Rockers, everything, because a lot of this stuff will only fit together one way. A lot of this stuff was uh, not mass produced. It was one off. They, they actually made the stuff fit, but it was not interchangeable. The odds on this one, the camshaft is stuck in the block, the crankshaft is stuck in the block. There isn't going to be anything on this one that's free. Magneto, take that off, blast it. Uh, we usually send them out to get them rebuilt. Uh, there's a few people in the States. There's uh, Adrian Magneto up in Canada. Uh, whatever your preference is, they, they all do a good job. This one, uh, carburetor somewhere, I guess. Uh, I guess he's got in his shop somewhere. Otherwise, we were going to try to start it today. <laughs> I'll go home and get it. <laughs> <laughs> get yourself a nice stand to work on. A lot of times, I just build a framework around them. Uh, he, hap he happens to have a nice one here that's universal that uh, you can roll the engine over upside down and everything and work on it. As far as getting stuff loose, it's, uh, like I say, it's a challenge sometimes. There is no easy way, it's just spend a lot of time. A lot of time, because time is cheaper than making parts. So, anybody here got any real good uh, solutions for getting pistons out, as far as uh, what to soak them up with or anything? Anybody got real good luck? No. Yes. I got a cat. I got a dog. <laughs> okay. Pistons have gotten stuck in there now. What if I put some whole liquid, say liquid nitrogen, in there right on top of that piston, that's aluminum piston, will it shrink so I can get uh, it? It may. Dry ice is another one. Right. Yeah. Uh, on this one here, there are some holes in the side here that they cord with. Take them out. You can put some heat in there to try to get the liner warmed up. Uh, like the heart pars, they've got an actual flat cover you can take off, put some heat on there and uh, put them in a press and not, not put a whole lot of pressure on them, but keep a steady pressure and after a while sometimes they move. I know some people have left uh, a press on them for a week or better, and all of a sudden they moved a sixteenth of an inch. Well, that's progress. Once they've moved it, uh, the odds are that you can keep them moving. Another thing to really consider, if you ever put pressure on the top of a piston, is put a steel plate on it that's almost full diameter of the piston, because otherwise you will bust the center out of it. You got a question? The anything you can do to crack that rust, you know, thermal thermal shock on some of that stuff is very beneficial, whether it be hot or cold, either way. It's almost the same exact price to make a new piston versus boring and sleeving, and then you have a fresh piston with new wrist pin board, new ring grooves. And you can get put modern rings in it, so it, it's it's a balance. It's a very fine line of where you what.
what you do. That, that probably has to get bored. So you're just machining it once. You're not machining it twice. You're not spending the press time. And you can have new pistons, and then they're really fresh. And you're not going to spend all that time fixing the old pistons. So it's a, it's a very delicate balance line. This engine is coming back running. This will run before it leaves my shop. Next week. I always tell everybody I'll have it done by the 4th of July, but I don't give them a year. I think a good rule of thumb would be on cylindrical stuff like pistons and things like that is cool what's on the inside, heat what's on the outside, that'll help you break the loops. The, the problem with that is when it's froze up as tight as what this one is, they almost become one. And it's, it's hard to heat one and cool the other because they just transfer heat so well. This, tra this engine probably will actually come apart a lot better than it, it looks. I've worked, we pulled this engine out last so what, Thursday or something out of the tractor chassis, and like bolts literally just, they do come undone. Kurt's done a fine job of spraying it down because he's part of the wire brush union, and he, he does a great job of that. that. So, <laughs> so Luke, Luke Weiss and I are, are union stewards for the wire brush union, so if you'd like to join. <laughs> So uh, it, it, it we really literally have had that. I, I, I've soaked that with a product called Free All uh, for uh, a year. Uh, it's you know, and there's there's a variety of products you can use. Everybody's got their favorite. Uh, when when my oldest son was little, I was uh, I, I found PB Blaster, you know, which I thought that was God's gift to everything. <laughs> He asked me what I was spraying all over that engine, and I said, well, son, that's panther piss. <laughs> and he, he sat there for a little while, and he said, how do they get it? <laughs> you walk behind him, Kurt? I've never tried it. I've never tried it. I know, uh, like on snowmobile carburetors and stuff that are all stuck, all stuck, they use it a lot. But typically, that's aluminum. I've never tried it. Never tried it. Uh, I had I had one that was stuck really bad, and I had a guy tell me this, and I tried it. I heated the piston from within, heated it as hot as I could get it and then let it cool for 24 hours, let it cold, because that heat breaks that, that connection between the two. So I heated the inside of the piston, let mm -hmm. it cool for 24 hours, and then it came loose. So I, I you had want success. That, you want that working motion, and it's only a couple thousandths at most, but it, it really will break, break a bond loose if it's really stuck. There was a question. Can you explain how you machine a piston out. I mean, you got a connecting rod. You got the rod in the way. Sometimes you got to make rods. <laughs> you're, you're saying you just break it out of there. You you can break it out. You can go with a die grinder and split it. Uh, hacksaw blade, whatever you need to do. Sawzall. Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer. <laughs> just <laughs> second thought. <laughs> Dynamite. Tannerite. Tannerite. <laughs> JT, what about it vapor rust versus electrolysis? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> vapor rust is a very fine product too. That's kind of magic. Actually, the, the, the valve cage that is out, um, we use I use the vapor rust on on that. Have you ever tried electrolysis? Anybody? Uh, at, at work, the, the differential out of this tractor is a mess. And this, we're going to try electrolysis on it using a using a four by four chemical tote. Just throw a battery to it or a charger to it, and yep. 
it's, I've heard phenomenal things about that as far as taking a part and it looks like brand new when you're done. You can't do it with brass or bronze parts in there. They'll disappear. Don't do that. That's one way to save the casting. Get the bronze out and just melt it. Yeah. And the, the wrist pin to be in there loose. You could just... Rebush it. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what. Thank you, Al. Uh, we will look forward to progress reports. <laughs> and <Yeah>. destruction. <laughs> and destruction. <laughs>